Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is your sister, Dr. Rania Awad, director of the Khalil Center Bay Area offices here in San Francisco. MashaAllah, this year has been an amazing year of growth for Khalil Center, both regionally, nationally, and internationally. Alhamdulillah. And part of the work that draws me to Khalil Center is very much this idea of integrating Islamic principles into professional psychotherapy space. MashaAllah, for many people, this has been a struggle to really find this kind of support and service. And honestly, there are so many Muslims who are unsure of how to exactly take care of their mental health and well-being, but still be true to their Islamic principles. I'll give you an example that's very much relevant in these last 10 days of Ramadan. Well, these last 10 days are very much marked by the Sunnah of I'tikaf, the Sunnah of spiritual seclusion and devotion. Now, this year with COVID era, subhanAllah, our masajid are closed. And often it would be within the masjid that the men for sure would be doing atikaf and for some of the women as well. Now, this year our masajid are closed, but it does not mean that we're unable to do atikaf altogether because we could still do some of the main principles behind it. And for many people, they ask, is there an Islamic form for meditation? that often is prescribed by physicians and primary care doctors and you know therapists and coaches and such. And they're often prescribing this secular form of meditation and it feels very distant for the practicing Muslim. My answer to that is absolutely. Not only do we have our own indigenous forms of meditation or I'm going to actually term it contemplation, but it is incredibly effective and it's actually quite easy to do, and it falls right in line with the concept of i'tikaf or spiritual seclusion. Let me explain what I mean. Now, for many people, when I ask them, what does i'tikaf mean to you? Often, the first top three words that come to mind are Ramadan, which we're in, but we're not always in. Men, but that's only half of the population. And masjid, but like we said, masjid are closed in this COVID era. So the answer, though, that I'm looking for is that i'tikaf is a sunnah of the Prophet wasallam that he did year-round. And in that year-round devotional time that he would take away on his own to really refuel, and he did this before his nubuwa even started in Ghar Hira, in the cave of Hira, to really build up what would then, he didn't know at the time, but would then need to be that spiritual stamina to carry him through prophethood, subhanAllah. And even after he became the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he received Nabuwa. After that point, he would consistently, not just in Ramadan, but all year long, do this atikaf or spiritual seclusion. And people often ask, what do you do in atikaf? We know prayer, we know to make dua, ask Allah for supplications, and we know to do dhikr or remembrance of Allah, but there's more. And that's where this concept of Islamic quote unquote meditation or I'll call it contemplation comes in because one of the main devotional aspects that you should do in an atikaf space or in the current era where we can't fully do atikaf other than women who are able to uphold the sunnah alhamdulillah in their own homes but for everybody who's unable to do atikaf in the masjid then this the alternative is something called khalwa which is essentially also a seclusion but it is not with the formal intention of atikaf now, whether you're doing atikaf or you're doing khalwa, the idea of meditation or contemplation in Islam is a key aspect to that devotional practice. And that in Arabic is called tafakkur. And tafakkur is a concept in which you actually think about, tafakkur comes from the idea of fikr, to think about and to contemplate various aspects of your life. Now, many different teachers and spiritual guides and teachers have taught what you do in tafakkur in different forms because there's many different ways to do this. I'll share with you the one that I've learned and that I found very, very helpful both to myself and to those whom I work with. So first, if you want to really think about how to do tafakkur, you start with your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is at the core and center of everything. And you think about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to you. Now we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he's closer to us than our own jugular veins. And we know from the ayat that he responds to the caller 
who asks for his help and that he's always there by our sides. But we need to really think and contemplate about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to us and who he is to all of the people around us. Because often we enlarge the relationships of people and we kind of make them very, very big in our minds and our hearts above that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about a person that you have a difficult relationship with. Maybe this is a family member. Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's your boss. And you've made that relationship and that difficulty you've had with them very, 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 very enlarged. And they feel like Fir'aun, right? They feel like this, you know, a Fir'aunic kind of um, presence above you. But we forget that above every Fir'aun is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every Fir'aun has Allah over them. And when you contemplate on the relationship of who your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who he is, Jalla Jalaluhu, in all of his glorious names, you realize that those people, whoever they may be, as much as you might have blown them out of proportion, they shrink back to actual size in relation to the grandness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You also contemplate about the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you in your lives. You know, I had a teacher who would often say that one of her favorite things to do in atikaf and in the concept of tafakkur or contemplation she would do in her atikaf is to play the game called Thank You Allah Game. And she would actually play this game with her own children as well, which I think is such a lovely idea. And basically you would start from your head and you go to your toes. And you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every single thing that you were given, every single blessing that you have that you may have never even thought to say thank you for. This idea of shukr, right, and giving thanks. And the ayah in the Quran says, in shakartum la'azidannakum. And if you were to thank me, I will increase you. But we forget to think. And if you start from your head, you think about cognitively, you know, all you've been able to accomplish in your life with the mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. You reach your eyes and you think about the blessing of being able to see and what would happen and how your life would be drastically different if you were visually impaired. But we never really think to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our eyes sometimes, right? Or even our eyelashes or the fact that we have eyelids and that they take, you know, the, the harm away from our eyes. Or the idea of the eyebrow, whoever thought in to take a moment to thank Allah for the eyebrow but in Arabic the eyebrow is called the hajib and a hajib is like hijab the thing that is a barrier or protects and for many if you've ever taken a tumble you or your child you know that it could have been a serious um, you know a problem injury to the eye but the hajib often protects it and so on and so forth the nose and the ears and the tongue and all the blessings and the very oxygen that we breathe that we don't even think to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, yet without it, even just for a few seconds, without it, depleted, we would be gone. So this concept of thanking Allah for our blessings, and then you think about all the different people in your life, the good, the bad, the ugly, your interactions with them, and who they are, and how sometimes we've given them more power over us than, Allah, than they should have. And this is some of the work we do in therapy, of really thinking about the different relationships and what kind of both healthy and toxic relationships we have in our lives. And then you also think about the world around you, beyond just you and the people with, in your life. You think about the heavens and the earths and the sky, the rain, right, the clouds. You think about all the natural resources around us. And all of this really helps calm the anxiety down and grounds us and brings us back to reality, all while doing shukr, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing tasbih, right? Of like of it being in wonderment, subhanAllah, right? All while thinking, um, giving hamd and shukr to Allah, all while being in, in complete gratitude and awe of who he is, Jalla, Jalla Jalaluhu. And when we have that kind of contemplation, that's just one form of contemplation. There's so many different forms. This is so much more in tune with the Muslim than a secular form of meditation in which either you're told to clear the mind and devoid it of anything at all, or that you're meant to focus on one point of something arbitrary that is not as powerful or important or divine as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now, this is just the beginning of a much larger discussion, but I wanted to bring it to our, dis our to our attention today, especially because we're in the last 10 days. And many of us hope to, either, as women, hope to actually go into formal atikaf within our homes, which is very simple of just making the intention and finding the place, corner of your home to make that, to turn into a masjid by a simple intention. I intend an atikaf, and this area of my home, right, this section, even as big as just a prayer rug, is my masjid temporarily. And for men, they would be doing the khalwa or kind of taking a spiritual retreat without the formal intention of atikaf, but able to do the prayers and the dhikr and the Qur'an reading and the dua, but also this contemplation, because it has such a wonderful effect both spiritually and also on our emotional and mental well-being. So I hope, inshallah, this tidbit was helpful to you in your use in the last 10 days of Ramadan. And a last reminder here that one of my teachers, who I'm very fond of, would often say that atikaf for the modern Muslim is like the valve on a pressure cooker. And that valve allows the steam to escape on what otherwise is a building and building and building of pressure. And think about all the stresses in our life and the modern lifestyle and all the difficulties and all the troubles. And it builds and builds and builds and eventually that pressure cooker will explode without that safety valve. Well, that safety valve, spiritually speaking, is atikaf. And, and the very actions we do within atikaf, whether they be the prayers, the duas, the dhikrs, and especially the tafakkur, the contemplation we outlined today, and other forms which we'll get to in future videos, inshallah, like the dabbur or pondering, and and so on, inshallah ta'ala. Please keep myself and your and myself and my family and the Khalil Center offices and their staff in your du'as in this blessed Ramadan. And may we be re rejoined, inshallah, in our masajid very soon. Bi'ithnillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give cure to the COVID and a treatment and vaccine very soon and uplift this tribulation from all of us. Allahumma ameen. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.